Okay, and final speaker for our NGOs, I'll be taking Natalie Bennett after that. Our next speaker is Anne Belton for the campaign against the arms trade. Hello, and I'm going to be talking about one of the reasons, or perhaps even the main reason, why the UK turned such a blind eye to human rights in Saudi Arabia. Um, but for campaign against arms trade, that's for some of the others. We, by the way, were set up in 1974 and do exactly what it says on the tin, as it were. Um, for us, it's more than a matter of the one man. It is the general human rights in Saudi Arabia that has um, made it one of our priority, if not the priority country for us. It, the general human rights, where 100 people have already been executed in 2015, the treatment of the immigrant labourers there is absolutely despicable, and the lack of women's rights, and of course, now Yemen. So it's against all that background as well as very Darwin that we um, look at Saudi Arabia. The UK's arms trade with Saudi Arabia began in a fairly small way in the 1960s. And it was fairly buccaneering and some very colourful characters involved. But since the 1980s, it has become absolutely massive and governments have, well, they were involved right from the beginning, but have become much more involved. It's absolutely key to the whole UK arms trade. And if the arms sales to Saudi Arabia go, the whole of the UK's arms trade is in jeopardy, which is one of the reasons people are so keen on justifying it. So you challenge that trade, you challenge the whole arms trade. It started in the 1980s because they were wanting the very oil-rich country of Saudi Arabia to recycle its oil wealth. So governments, Western governments, wanted to sell the arms so that some of that money went back to the West. The US, because it didn't want to upset Israel, more or less gave way to the UK, which is what kind of started those very big arms deals. The two big arms deals, uh, Al Yamama, which was 1985-86, um, Al Yamama means dove, so that's fairly ironic to start with, um, that was for Tornado aircraft and Hawk jets. And the company behind that was the company is now BA Systems. The Salaam project, um, which was negotiated 20, 2005, 6, 7, et cetera, 8, um, and that Salaam, of course, means peace, um, that is for Typhoon aircraft. And that's the current project, along with the Saudi British Defence Cooperation project which is about servicing all the equipment all the way through. Again, BA Systems is the main contractor. But while BA Systems is the company involved, both those big deals are government-to-government -government contracts. It's the UK government has a contract with the Saudi Arabian government, and then the UK government has a back-to-back -back contract with BA Systems. So, but the absolute nub of it, and um, which the Saudis really value, is that they are government-to-government -government contracts. Now, those of you who follow arms trade issues may know that within the UK Ministry of Defence, there are about 240 civil servants and military personnel who are paid for by the Saudi government. <coughs> those. Um, personnel support mod, uh, work for MODSAP, which is Ministry of Defence Saudi Armed Forces project, that's about 200 of them, and about 40 on the smaller project, the Saudi Arabia National Guard Communications Project, or SANCOM. So these are UK military personnel and civil servants paid for by the Saudi government. So why are the deals wrong? Well, they always used to say the equipment wasn't actually used and you can't commit a human rights violation with a fighter jet. But whatever, how, whether the equipment is used or not, it is still sending a very strong message of UK government support with that equipment. Human rights are definitely second place. And that message of support from the UK government is not only because they're government to government deals, but to get those deals. They go, the Prime Ministers go out there. We have, we have Thatcher. We have 
Blair and we've had Cameron going to Saudi Arabia begging them to sign these deals and the last one um, which was only finalised, I think it was 2013, that might have been 2014, I'm pretty certain it was 2013, to get the final signature, even Cameron wasn't enough, they had to send Prince Charles, so you might have seen those ludicrous pictures of him dancing around. He was there, they finally signed off on that arms deal. So it's sending this huge message of UK support. Now, of course, they can't even argue those who want these deals to continue, the, the equipment isn't used because actually those fighter jets have been used again in Yemen to drop bombs, so they are being used now. There's, um, even if it wasn't the human rights and the conflict and that, the corruption is endemic in the Saudi sales. You may well remember that the last time I can remember Saudi coming really to the fore was when the serious Ford Office investigation into the BAE's deals was stopped by Tony Blair in 2006. So um, he stopped them, basically, they may have claimed other things, but he basically stopped them because the Saudi royals didn't like it and they were getting too close to the people who were getting the corrupt payments. But there's still a serious Ford Office investigation into this SANCOM project, the Saudi, uh, Saudi um, Arabian National Guard communications contract. That is currently continuing, and we're still wondering, that's with a smaller company called GPT, which is nowadays a subsidiary of Airbus. Um, in, that investigation is still continuing, and it was quite embarrassing because the head of the Saudi Arabian National Guard was when it, the contract started, it was Prince Abdullah who became King Abdullah and who died quite recently. Um, we'll, we wait to see what's happening on that. I think the UK government would like to kick it into the long grass. So, what, how can they justify all this? They use two reasons. One is UK national security, which was the ostensible reason they gave for ending that um, serious fraud office investigation into Al Yamama. But in 2004, no less than Osama bin Laden actually criticised the Saudi royal family's corrupt gang and referred to arms purchases by Saudi as evidence of the um, regime's lack of concern for its increasing economic and social insecurity of its citizens. He was using that as a justification for terrorism. And of course, many of the um, terrorists in the Twin Towers, 9-11 attacks came from Saudi Arabia. So while they're claiming national security is a reason for the arms deals, in fact the arms deals also reinforce the terrorism. And the other big excuse is the one you've all heard, I think somebody mentioned earlier, the jobs um, one. I think it's um, any investigation, it doesn't really hold up. Military export jobs um, only account for 0.2% of total employment in the UK. They're mostly highly skilled workers. There's a shortage of engineers. Um, we're running an arms to renewables campaign. And if that was successful, it would be a double win because it could mean less dependence on Saudi oil as well as an end to Saudi arms sales. And if they ended the Saudi arms sales, there'd be no reason for the UK government and others to stop speaking out on human rights. So I think Saudi is absolutely key to so many of these things. It's a very big issue.